welcome to today's learning event. We're going to show you an overview of the Stratusview product, everything that it does. If you are interested in getting more information, you can always go to stratusview.com. We have our phone number. You can request a demo. Uh, for, for more information, we'll set up a demo and get into more detail of how you run your business. So today's objective is just go through all the modules that we have, what we can do, and if it's of interest to you. So we have uh, a cloud-based site. As long as you can get anywhere on the browser, you can access this, whether it's in the field, at your office, or from the mobile. We do have an iOS and Android mobile available that will allow you to do everything in project management, as well as see and modify all your documents. Up at the top here, I'm in a specific job called commercial building. We have three different levels of security since we are cloud-based. The first one would be an org admin. The org admin is going to allow you to set up your organization, see things the way that they should be seen, include your team, and what have you. We have project admins, which would be someone similar to what I'm signed in now. It gets, they are allowed to see everything within that project, have full access, delete rights, add and edit rights. And then you have project members, which would be the third level. And you can provide customized or predetermined roles and permissions for each project that they're included in. Just note that everyone that comes up in the drop downs has to be a project member in order to send an email out to them. So starting at the top here, the projects bar is going to be a quick way to access projects that you might want to get into. Video learning, we have a two to three minute video on everything that I'm going to show you today. Contact us. Our support staff is open from 8 to 8 Eastern. Feel free to call them at any time if with a subscription and that's included. Release notes anytime we release something you will receive an email with a breakdown of the release and then we also have that breakdown within the release notes. So getting into the actual project up at the top we have project setup within the defaults here that's going to allow you to set up your default return times on RFIs, submittals, any type of markups that should go on change orders. It's also going to allow you to set up your defaults who is your architect, your client or owner. So those fill in properly for your RFIs and submittals and such. Project members, as I said before, you can select project members and give them certain permissions within this specific project. List management gives you a customization of the drop downs within our system. Advanced list management integration setup, those are both for integrations to accounting backends. We are integrated with Sage 300, Sage 100, Intact, as well as Acumatica. So if you have one of those accounting platforms, we will be able to communicate all costs back and forth. Subcontractor performance evaluation, that would be like a post-construction evaluation so you can rank and grade those vendors or subcontractors on your job, which will accumulate an average over all the jobs so you can use that for your own internal purposes. Cost management, this is where you're going to be able to see your budget or estimate as well as your schedule of values. Write all your commitments, whether they're purchase orders, subcontracts, task orders, work orders, what have you, they'll go back as well. We have change events, which are contract affects your schedule of values in your estimate. We have commitment change events, which would change your subcontracts. We have forecasting and pencil draws. Under project management, we have all the suite that you would need in order to run a job uh, specifically. Reports, these would be all of the reports or logs for each of the items that I'm showing you. Uh, the most important thing about the reports to remember is that you can set up email schedulers to send out the logs or emails to whom and whenever you want uh, based on the criteria for the project. So if you want to send out your RFI log or submittal logs every Monday at 6 a.m., you can do that through the report scheduler. Last section, I'll be going over the documents. We have two different ways to store documents, and I'll be showing you those both. I'm going to start in project management under open issues. Open issues is an easy way to track issues through your team or outside of your team to assign things to people to be done. One thing you'll see in our system that's different from others is that we have the folders. Folders allows you to set up and customize your project, whether you're a design build where you might have high contribution through your subcontractors, or it's a quick job that you won't have any need for your subcontractors to get in here. This customization really allows you to do that, and I'll show you specifically and talk to other situations. So I'm going to go into issue number two. This layout is going to be similar throughout our site. On the left side is going to be the required items. On the right side will be optional. You have the option to write uh, per potential change orders from your open issues, your punch list, as well as your RFIs. Coming down, this is a simple question to a specific person. 
and then you have a discussion section. Everything within the open issues is going to be similar throughout the site. That's why I like to start here. Where the reply and discussion is going to be a recording of everything that's said by who and what date and what they said. So if you come back a couple of years from now and you need to remember why you did something out on the project site, this is what would recall that memory. Coming down further, you have a drag and drop to include any files. If you happen to be using your mobile device, any pictures that you take or drag from your device into there will be available for both parties. CC users is common throughout as well. These would be people who want to receive emails whenever there's a new comment or when this specific issue is closed. CC users as well as the responsible parties or the two in this case will receive those emails. And then down below would be any documents that would be attached. The next item will be punch lists. Punch lists are going to look very similar to the open issues. This would typically be towards the end of the job. I'll go into punch list number two and show you the main differences here. So in the punch list it's going to look very similar. Left side is your required, right side is your optional. Here you can see it actually is tied out to a potential order change order number two. Coming down the first big difference is that you have multiple statuses. So if you do invite your contractors, owners, subcontracts to to take a look at this specific punch list item, they'll have the ability to say whether they believe it's open or closed, leave that comment and or picture uh, to this specific punch list item. You also have multiple responsible parties. So what that means is that you can assign responsible parties to this punch list and each one of them will have access to this, whether it's access through the mobile device or the web. The discussion replies open to anyone that is a uh, responsible party or anyone that wrote this specific punch list. CC users, same exact reason. And then you have your drag and drop to record anything that's pertinent to this specific punch list. Going over to the middle in the meetings. In the meetings we have agendas and meetings. Uh, so if you'd like to start with an agenda and go to a meeting, the blue plus here will help you do that. You can create a meeting from an agenda or an agenda from a meeting going back and forth. We don't require that you start or finish with anything. You can just go meeting to meeting if you'd like to do that. Going into meeting number two, you can see who the attendees are, the meeting information up top, and then the meeting minutes down here. I'm going to click into the meeting minute just to show you what it takes, what it looks like. You have a lot of options here. These drop downs, the type and the category are some of those list management drop downs that I was saying that you can customize to be uh, more accessible and especially in your printouts for your company. You also have complete and hidden. Some companies like to mark things complete and show them one week and then they can hide it the next week. This shows whether things are going to be shown on your report or not or mark complete when you actually do print them out. Within a meeting minute you have your notes. You also have the ability to mark responsible parties for each thing. I'm going to go back out to the meeting and show you prints. So here you'll see there's a print and a reports. All of our prints and reports are crystal reports. So if you have anyone that knows anything about crystal reports, we're more than happy to give you every type of printout and report that we have so you can customize them to your company. This is our standard. Uh, you have a standard for everything that you'll see today. Uh, this would be your standard meeting minute printout where you can see due dates, your responsible parties, if it is closed and if it's old or new business. Coming I'll go over to submittals. Submittals is pretty basic. Uh, you can start folders here. Some people like to put approved submittal folder here. The reason being is that again you can uh, make permissions to only allow people to see certain folders. So you can imagine your field would want to see only the approved submittals so you can have your working submittals down here. Once they're approved, move them into this package so when they open this up within their mobile app, they'll see only approved items. To go into a package, I'll show you what that takes, what that looks like. You have your header package information up top and your one-to-many submittal items. You can have one package have one item or you can have a submittal package have many items. You can think about like plumbing fixtures where you might want to send over 20 different variations of something so you'd have one fixtures package with multiple items. We also create transmittals. All the transmittals that are created for the submittal package are recorded to and from. And then you have any of the documents that go along with this. I'm going to follow this through just so you can see the process here. So I'm going to take that attachment as well as this submittal item here. And I'm going to hit submit for review. When you hit submit for review, it's going to bundle those two things together into one printable PDF and make this transmittal. The two is automatically filled in with that uh, project defaults that we talked about earlier. There's nothing else that you need to do. You can hit transmit and email that out automatically and they'll go to whoever is selected in the two. You can put remarks in here if needed. 
But coming on down, I'll show you what else is available to transmittal. So you have items being sent for any type of a physical thing being transmitted out. You have CC users, so if you happen to have an architect with someone that's uh, helping them out, you can add that assistant architect here, so they also have the opportunity to respond back to this submittal package. Transmittals and attachments, this was automatically coming from that transmittal thing, so when I go ahead and send this out, everyone that is in the two and the CCs now gets an email for them to respond directly from that email. When they respond, all of that is recorded within these submittal items. I'll show you the emails uh, when I also send out an RFI just to make it simpler to follow. Coming over to some expediting logs, this is going to be another way to create those submittals instead of hand typing them out as you go. You can actually import a submittal registry. So when you go through and look through your specification and you make that Excel spreadsheet that tells you everything that you need to go ahead and submit out to the architect, you can import that Excel spreadsheet and it's going to make something very similar to this. So what this is, is the division with the CSI codes and then the items within that CSI code. You can see this item is already linked to submittal, so a submittal has been created already from the CSI code. So let me go down to something that may not have been transferred yet. So here we have pending. So Ed is going to receive an email about these two items that are due when this is overdue. So since this was due in February, Ed has been receiving this weekly every Monday that these two items are still required from him. Those emails will go out automatically two weeks before this required date, one week, and then every Monday that they're overdue. Let's say Ed has gone ahead and given me that information that's needed. You can click on the items, create submittal, and it's going to bring those items into a submittal package. It's going to allow me to say whether this is, uh, should go in our pending or our base folder. So I'll go ahead and put this in our pending. You have the option to change this. So this is going to be sample one. And hit create, and you'll notice that it brings him back to the submittals, sample 01, and then brought those two items in here, and Ed is the submitting subcontractor. So it's just a way to not only track submittals, but also pending submittals, and I'll show you the report when we get down to that section. Coming over to the RFIs. We have the folders. Uh, this is a good example, field RFIs, of why most people will do uh, subfolders, or a good example of why you might consider it. Uh, you can imagine that your field might want to write a bunch of RFIs and you want your PM to go ahead and review those RFIs before they go out directly to your architect to make a contractual RFI. So with this setup, you can have uh, the field only see field RFIs folder, create those RFIs, and those would automatically be sent to your PM. Your PM would then have the option to copy those over into the contractual, which is down here. And once those become contractual, your architect will automatically be filled in. I'm going to go ahead and fill myself in here. And all the information that that uh, foreman, subcontractor, whoever did that uh, RFI fill-in would be automatically pre-populated. You can also change this when it gets to you. This is the same thing if you create a new RFI from the beginning. Requires on the left, optional on the right. You have your question. And you can go ahead and submit that out. When you submit that specific question, that's going to be sent out to whomever is supposed to receive it. They will receive an email that's going to allow them to automatically answer those questions. And when they are answered, that response is going to come down into the reply and discussion section. If you have someone that doesn't want to answer from the email directly, you can go ahead and type those in. And send that reply out so anyone that CC'd here or two will receive another email. Another thing to note is that when someone does reply from the email, we don't automatically close the RFI because you might want to get more information or request clarification. But if you do have the answer, you can go ahead and mark the answer here. And that is going to close the RFI as well as mark the date that it was closed. Daily logs would be the last thing in the project management section. This will allow you to have, again, folders as well as daily logs. When you create daily logs, it's going to bring in the author, whoever created it, the weather based on the zip code, give you four boxes to say what's going on on that site. And then you have activities. These would be the people who are out on site working for you. And you can record how many people they have. You can also drag and drop files or using the mobile, those will be attached to this specific thing. I'm going to print this just to show you what it looks like. 
This is your out-of-the-box daily log. Again, it can be completely customized through Crystal Reports. So here you can see we had two people out on site, how many people each individual company had, then what the total was on the site for that day, what the attachments are, and then at the bottom they'll be in thumbnail format. If you need to print each picture as a full, if you go to print and print with attachments, that'll print each one out as a full attachment. Under the reports, I'm going to click on the expediting report, but they're all going to be very similar, giving you a log of those specific items. The reason I'm going to do the expediting log because I like this report because it shows the architect what's pending to be sent out, as well as all the things that have already been sent out and created. So here you can see under Division 2, you have one pending item. Under Division 3, you have what is that seven items yet to be sent out or collected as a submittal package. But then it's also tracking the dates that specific submittal packages have already been created and sent out. And as I mentioned earlier, within the report section, you can set up an email scheduler to send that out. So in front of your owner's meeting, maybe you want to send the architect that submittal log, RFI log uh, before getting there. The next section is going to be your document section. We have two different ways to store your documents. The first way would be more of a final repository. So I'm going to go into the plans. Under current plans, this would be where you want to distribute things possibly uh, to people using the mobile device. Here you can see I have uh, single plans and I also have a combined set. I'm going to go ahead and open this combined set here and show you what it looks like. We have a thing called Stratuslink. Stratuslink will automatically hyperlink your plans and drawings. You'll have the option to uh, hyperlink a bound copy as well as split them out and have those bound uh, split copies hyperlinked as well. So here you can see that these sheets are not hyperlinked so I'm going to go back in and actually hyperlink these for you. You select, press a Stratus link. I'm going to combine the whole set and allow that to chug away. While that's going, it takes a little less than a second per sheet to do that. I'm going to show you what Stratus Drive is because that's the second way that we can do uh, documents. Stratus Drive is analogous to like a share file, Dropbox box, anything that you might use as far as a cloud-based sharing platform. Here you can see I'm in commercial building as well as in my local disk. I'm in commercial building as well. If I come in here, you can see you can create any type of folder. So what this is going to allow you to do is have your team locally drag and drop plans so you can imagine your architect and give you the opportunity to go ahead and mark these things up. Here's the hyperlinked uh, plan set in here. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when it actually comes back linked. So this is what Stratus Link does. It will bring that set back for you. And it's going to add five buttons at the bottom, as well as give you all of the hyperlinks within the set. These five hyperlinks, the home will bring you back to whatever is created as a table of contents. Your left and right button here, these are going to just scroll through each page as it happens. The up and down buttons are going to take you through the discipline. So in this specific bound one, I had architectural, structural, and it's going to go over to mechanical. And you can click home and come back. If you click on any of the other links, it's going to take you to that specific set. It's also going to show and create links between sections. You can also combine uh, hyperlinking as well. So if you click on your specifications as well as your drawings, those two will be connected and hyperlinked between your specifications and your drawings. So just know that's all included, this hyperlinking as well as the Stratus Drive. As I mentioned, this is the other way, Stratus Drive, which would be more of a collaborative type thing, but anything that you do within your local drive here will be brought up into the cloud. So members that you don't want to have access to that are going to see that specific thing. So if I come down to my local S drive, come to Stratus View, commercial building, in my plans, you'll see everything that's here locally is showing up in the cloud. The last section we're going to show you is cost management. I'm going to fly through these and just show you what each one is. The estimate info is going to be your schedule, excuse me, it's going to be your cost code breakdown of your budget. The original can either be created if, or if you're synced, as this one has last synced uh, earlier today, this will connect with those accounting systems I mentioned earlier. Your original budget, any pending and approved up in the cloud, and then your accounting 
again because we're synced this is a double check to make sure everything that has been happening in the field or maybe performed in the cloud actually went back to the accounting system the cost code overview tab is going to give you all of the commitments that have been written as well as the amounts invoiced and job to date costs for those specific things but it is uh, the same cost code structure as seen earlier contract info is going to be your schedule of values schedule of values is recording the same thing you have your original pending and approved that is created in the cloud your accounting approved which is going to be a double check between what's local and what's in the cloud and then you have your total build and retain that comes from your accounting system as well commitment info this is where you're going to create and pass through all of your purchase orders subcontracts task orders if it is a purchase order or anything other than a subcontract it will have yes here I'm going to click on this so you can see what a uh, commitment looks like to create. You have your number, your vendor, again, that we sync with your address book if need be, bringing over your vendor codes. And you have all this additional information. The only thing that separates a purchase order from a subcontract is this check mark, which gives you these five additional fields. You can create a purchase order with one to many things. You can create purchase orders with zero dollars and add lines through change orders. It's really up to you. You also have the ability to transmit these out to the subcontractor for approvals. Summary info is going to be a snapshot of your financial health of the job, basically going through and presenting on one screen everything I just showed you. This being your schedule of values, original, any pending change orders, approved change orders, total with approved, total pending with approved, because that goes against your forecast so you can get a projected margin. Your budget here, same thing. This is reading from your estimate info. Your gross margin is just your contract minus your estimate. Building status down here, this is going to come from your AR, showing you how much you've billed, how much has been retained, and how much you've been paid. In the middle, contract events, these would be your owner contract uh, change orders. We actually have nine different ways to store or create these. Uh, the only thing, if you are a sync project, that sync over are your change orders. In your internal events, an internal event would be a budget cost transfer. So if you want to move money around in your estimate, that's where you do it. Within your change order, I'll click on one so you can see what it looks like. You can see that this one has already been synced. There are sync times everywhere in here. Coming down, you have your scopes, your notes, you have the items that are here, and then you can uh, process things. So you can see this was actually processed from a COR. Down here you have all the links to the individual four items that made this one CO. Going to the link in that COR, I can come down here and actually see specifically what they are. Furthermore, you can see that I created a commitment change order from a contract change order because they're subcontracts and I have a link to take me there. Commitment and contract change orders are going to look the same. It's just that this is presented to a subcontractor versus to your owner. Forecasting is going to be a forecast cost at completion. So there are a couple of assumptions here. We have all of the forecasts that have been previously made in the drop down. You can make multiples per day or just record once a month. It doesn't really matter. There are actually two different types of do, ways to do forecasting. One is detailed and one's a summary. This one is a detail because you can forecast against the category. Coming across, you have your estimate with your original values, any pending and approved given your new total. On your uh, commitment side, your costs, you have your commitments, pending and approved change orders, as well as your non-commitment costs. Your non-commitment costs would be direct costs to the project, so like credit card statements, direct payments to your crew, giving you a total cost. Balance to complete is going to be the difference between the two, and then you have the ability to go ahead and forecast. So then I'm going to say I'm not going to spend $2,800, i am going to spend 4000 and that's going to change my variance here. So you can see that the variance has changed. And then you can also uh, do other things such as uh, do your risk uh, here. So you can apply risk whether you know how much risk is embedded in that $4,000. And you can add notes. There are multiple printouts. You have a detailed printout and a summary specifically for this forecast. The last thing I'm going to show you are pencil draws. Within pencil draws, you have contract and commitment side as well as cash flow. So this would be between you and your client. It's going to record and pull off of that contract info all of the line items so you can say what you want to get paid. So on site work, if you want to say that I am 5% done, it's going to record that and then you can print your draws from this giving you an invoice as well as a G702 and 703.
It's going to act as, uh, identical to the commitment side as well. So there's your invoice, 702 and 703. Your commitment side is going to look identical to what the contract is. It's just going to go off of all of your commitments versus your contracts. Cash flow analysis is going to give you a difference between what you are getting paid, what you're, you are paying out, so you know your cash flow for that specific month and pencil draw. So that brings this learning event to a conclusion. As I mentioned, if you have any questions or want any further information, please go to strategyview.com, click on request a demo, or give us a call, and we'd be more than happy to set up something more specific to your company. Thanks, and have a great day.